Have you ever been flustered trying to learn programming? Maybe you got stuck on a single problem for a very long time and didn't know how to start writing your code to solve it. Today, I am going to demonstrate how you can overcome this learning obstacle and take concrete steps to become a better programmer. Introducing computational thinking. It can be broken down into four parts. Decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithm design. The science of writing code is one thing, but the art of tackling problems is equally important. I'll be showing you seven tips you can use based on this framework by solving a programming problem step by step. The problem statement is as such. Write a function that takes in a list of numbers and an integer n, returning the same list with all the numbers that occur more than n times removed completely. Below is an example of a test case and its corresponding output. If you are completely new to programming, this might seem difficult, but not if you first decompose the problem. Decomposition, like the word suggests, is the process of breaking down big problems into smaller, more manageable slices. It is actually no different from how we attempt to cope with challenges in real life. For example, if we want to buy a house, we usually take a housing loan and repay the loan in installments instead of paying for the house all in one go. In the context of programming, here's my first tip before you decompose the problem. Create your own examples to help you visualize the problem and check your solutions. When you create your examples, it is good to have both borderline and extreme cases. I created two cases that are hovering around our boundary condition and derived that it will return the following lists. Through this, it is evident that our condition for deleting elements should look something like this in pseudocode. Here we want to remove the number in our original list if it has appeared more than n times, but not equals to n times or less exactly like how the problem describes, which is why we use the greater than inequality. An extreme test case like such which causes everything to be removed also further tells us to create a case where we will always return an empty list. We can also ask ourselves, what happens if the list length is less or equals to n? We realize that the function will just return the original list even if the same number repeats itself for the whole of the list. Let's take a mental note of these findings for now, as it will come in useful later. Moving on to tip number 2. Write out your desired objectives to simplify the problem. In the case of this task, we can summarize it into three concise goals. Firstly, count the number of times a specific number occurs in the list. Secondly, delete the numbers that occur more than n times. And finally, simply return the updated list. Now comes tip number 3. Try to find if there are any repeating patterns among and within problems. I like to see pattern recognition as a process where we try to gain an intuition of what needs to be done. Here, we discover that we need to constantly associate the numbers in the list with a counter that tracks the number of instances in which the element appears and store it somehow. At this point, we might think of using dictionaries to help us with that first objective. This is tip number four. Think of relevant data structures that can help you. For dictionaries, there's always a key and value pair, which perfectly suits our need in which the key can be the number that appears in the list and the value will be the number of times in which it appears. Don't worry if you are unfamiliar with the different data structures and their properties at first. As you gain experience by coding more, it will eventually become second nature to you. Tip number five, focus on the important things and ignore whatever is irrelevant. In this case, our focus is on the list we want to return. Since we are processing and modifying the list passed into our function, we need to ask ourselves some questions. Is there a preservation of order? Yes. The elements in the list must be kept in the same order. Can the problems be solved in parallel, or must it be done sequentially? Well, let's bring back the three objectives. It seems like each part must be done in order as each objective can only be fulfilled when the previous one is complete. With that out of the way comes tip number six. 
translate your plan into code. This is the part about algorithmic design where we combine whatever we did all together and implement our solution. First, let's cover the special cases. Remember what we identified while we created our own examples? In our function, we first put an if statement to check if n equals to 0. If so, we return an empty list. Next, we see if the length of the list is less than or equals to n, returning the original list if that's the case. Lastly, we designed the system that covers all other general cases. Remember how we had an intuitive guess of using a dictionary to count the occurrences a number appears? Python has an inbuilt solution called counter under collections to do just the job. We can pass in the original list into the initialized counter, which is a dictionary in itself, and implement the list comprehension to create a new list with only the numbers that appear less than or equals to n times. Although we initially thought of removing elements from the original list, since we have a better solution, we change our plan to be more efficient. This leads me to my final tip. Be flexible. Improvise. Adapt. Overcome. When we run our final code, we can use our test cases and some additional ones to check if it works. Looking at our output, we can verify our solution. Mission complete. To summarize, here are the 7 tips. 1. Create your own examples to help you visualize the problem and check your solution. 2. Write out your desired objectives to simplify the problem. This process is also known as decomposition. 3. Pattern recognition. Try to find if there are any repeating patterns among and within problems. 4. Think of relevant data structures that can help you. 5. Abstraction. Focus on the important things and ignore whatever is irrelevant. 6. Algorithmic design. Translate your plan into code. And last but not least, 7. Be flexible and adapt to find newer and better solutions along the way. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and all the best to you to becoming a better programmer.